So far, we've talked about chain lengths and step growth polymerization in terms of a parameter called the extent of reaction, which expresses the probability that a functional group on a molecule or monomer has experienced a reaction. And this helps us to see how the chain lengths on average evolve as the reaction progresses. But we also would like to get some idea about the distribution of different chain lengths that are present in the sample, because as you may remember, those are important for us to calculate molecular weight averages. So in order to do that, we need to use a statistical picture that allows us to count all of the monomers, dimers, trimers, etc. in the sample, add them all up, and establish what the distribution function is. Once we do that, then we can calculate molecular weight averages. And we'd like to see how those parameters are also related to the extent of reaction. So that will tell us how, as the reaction progresses, the distribution of chain lengths also evolves. And so just to review, as a starting point, remember that we're talking about a straightforward case where we have bifunctional monomers, equal reactivity of functional groups, and perfect stoichiometry. So this is a recipe, as we said earlier, to create linear polymers. Uh, also, remember at time t, we've defined this extent of reaction parameter, which we can also think of as a conversion if we want to talk about it in chemical engineering terms. And we can ask questions then about the population of molecules that are in our sample. For example, say we want to know how many molecules are monomers. Uh, so remember that uh, we defined this parameter n naught, which is the initial number of functional groups. Uh, that are present in the sample. And since we have bifunctional monomers, the number of molecules that are initially present will be n naught divided by 2. The extent of reaction gives us the probability that a functional group has experienced a reaction. And remember that it follows that 1 minus p expresses the probability that a functional group has not yet experienced a reaction and is therefore available to participate uh, in a subsequent reaction. So now, let's see if we can use these principles to count up the number of molecules in our sample. So let's first ask the question, how many of these molecules at some given time, at any given time, uh, are monomers? So we can think about that as follows. Uh, so we can think about one term that expresses the number of molecules with unreacted functional groups. So that's going to be the total number of functional groups that were initially present uh, in the sample divided by 2. So that's the initial number of molecules times the probability that functional groups have not yet experienced a reaction. So this product, n naught over 2 times 1 minus p, gives us the number of molecules that contain unreacted functional groups. Then, uh, from that population, what is the fraction of these molecules that have not experienced a reaction. So again, this is 1 minus p, expressing the probability the reaction has not occurred. So therefore, all the molecules in the sample that are monomers are the fraction of molecules with unreacted functional groups that have not experienced a reaction. This product gives us the number of monomers in the sample. Now we can take this further and ask the next question, how many of these molecules are dimers? So in other words, how many have experienced only one reaction uh, at a given point in time? So our starting point again uh, is the number of molecules with unreacted functional groups times uh, the probability that a reaction has not occurred. This gives us the number of monomers. And so now we want to ask how many of these molecules have experienced only one reaction, and that is expressed by p. Therefore, this product of the number of monomers times p gives us the number of molecules that are dimers, because they have to be unreacted monomers that we start with that then experience only one reaction. We can continue this line of thinking and ask the question, how many molecules are trimers? So now, if we think back at the pathway to achieve a molecule that's a trimer, this has to ultimately result from uh, reactions of a monomer that has experienced two reactions uh, in order to reach this uh, trimer state. 
So if we continue uh, this up to an arbitrary length, I think you can see the pattern that emerges. The number of molecules that are imers uh, is equal to the number of molecules with unreacted functional groups times the probability that those molecules have experienced uh, uh, the number of reactions to produce an imer. So now we have with this relationship an expression that allows us to count up all the number of molecules that have different chain lengths uh, in the entire population of our polymer sample.